began to play the harlot, because this is what Balaam did. He, he set him up with the Moabite women, and they enticed them into um, adultery. They're men, and they worship Baal, a peor. That's, that's what happened here. And there was a fertility god, and it was, you know, had to do with, you know, the crops and all that craziness. But the point is, they fell for the allurement, the sexual uh, enticements. And, you know, American guys, I mean, come on. If you're addicted to internet porn, you're worshiping an idol. And the Lord doesn't want you to do it anymore. He wants you to stop right now. Stop now. Don't get into the moaning and the crying and don't make excuses for yourself. Stop it. It is like unto Baal at Peor. Looking at women's bodies that are not your wife is sin. Period. And don't say, well, all these other people do it. I don't care. I am telling you what the Word of God says about it. Word of God is clear. If, if, if it's not, what is it but idolatry, right? To, to, to gawk at it, to waste time, and to spend money on it? You, you talk about sin? That needs to be repented of. You will not get a blessing until you repent of those sins. And they invited the people to sacrifice to their gods. And the people ate, bowed down. They ate and they bowed down to the gods. So Israel joined themselves to Baal of Peor, and the Lord was angry against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So, the, so Moses said to the judges of Israel, each of you slay his men who have joined themselves to Baal of Peor. Fortunately, not all the Israelites had done that. But the ones who did, executed. They committed a crime, now they die. Then behold, one of the sons of Israel came and brought to his relatives a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the sons of Israel while they were weeping at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Why? Because people were dying, executed. Leaders. High and noble men. While Phineas, that when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he arose from the midst of the congregation. He was he wasn't a spokesman, but from the middle of the congregation, you preachers out there don't realize you got people in your church that love truth and holiness and love your church as much as you do, and they're coming from the midst to help you, and you don't want their help. May God have mercy on you. Here's Phineas. He comes from the middle of the congregation of Israel to save the day. Listen to what he does. And he took a spear in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman. That enticing Moabite woman who had drawn him into sexual sin and oneness. That's what happened. And when the two were coming, they had joined themselves together in this idolatry that breaks the covenant repent now but in God's case back then and I even say today some of us are gonna get it soon that God is very serious about holiness he's very serious about sexual immorality he's very serious about worshiping material gods in the church and he says here though he pierced them through so the plague of the sons of Israel was checked or stopped because of the zeal of Phineas. Now, what did God do for Phineas? Now, Phineas, the son of Aaron the priest, had turned away, has turned away my wrath, the Lord says, from the sons of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them. And it's so that I did not destroy the sons of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore, say, Behold, I give him a covenant of peace. Who among us will be the Phineas of our time? So that the Lord will openly give him a covenant of peace before all the congregation because he was zealous with the zeal of Jesus Christ for holiness and purity in the temple of God. When he whipped those money changers out and it said in the word of God, it said, for zeal for the house of God consumed our Savior, our leader, our captain, now listen to this. And it shall be for him that, that his descendants after him a covenant of perpetual priesthood will be established under Phineas. Now do you think perpetual means it's going to stop? I believe 
that this perpetual priesthood continued on even to this day and will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. That there's always been this zealous remnant and they exercise their, their remnant nature by being passionate for Jesus Christ, by being zealous for the honor of God, for the name of God. They're not ashamed of Christ and they're even willing to die for him. They're even willing to go to the stake and burn for him. They're even willing to go to the lions for him, like those Christians in the first couple centuries and in, down through the ages under the empire of Rome over popish uh, tyranny. So many Christians were murdered and slaughtered and, and treated like dogs. But these people had zeal for God and they would not disavow their faith. Therefore, they were hot for God. And the Lord, when he sees that we are not jealous for him, his heart is provoked. And I am telling you, the Father's heart and His Son are very provoked about us, the church in America. He wants us back all the way, not part of the way, not a couple. He wants as many as who will come to the wedding feast. He says the ones who are already invited, who think they're coming, but are living lecherous lives of self-deception, He goes, now, they don't want to come, just like all those Jews have rejected Jesus. He now go out and get the halt and the lame and compel them to come in because I got plenty of room. The Lord has enough room for all the world to come today. Won't you come and dine with the Lord? Won't you come and be zealous for truth? Instead of all the crap, you being your own God, you making the rules, you can't have all that knowledge. You don't know how to run the universe. I don't know how to run myself, let alone my family and the... I mean, I'm working on just, oh God, what do you want me to do? How can you know what's right for me? And how can I know? One thing I know what's right for you is that you turn back to God. Because that's home base. That's, that's E.T. Go Home. That's where it is. It's with Jesus. That's where, wh wh why he came. Why would God come, be born in a manger stall? Why would he be born in a tough time? And Herod goes off to killing babies just because he knows a king's born. That's Satan exercising his, his tyranny over the world, trying to kill Jesus, just like he tried to kill Moses. But God is jealous for people, and he preserves his own all the way to the current hour. And he wants you back. And I want to see people come back now. I don't enjoy talking about sin. I want to talk about the holy ingathering of God. Phineas had zeal for the holiness of God, and guess what? Less people died. In fact, they, they stopped dying at that moment. 24,000 died, but no more, because Phineas had the guts to stand up and drive a spear through the sinful behavior, to call it out, to say, this is wrong. What are we afraid of? The Lord's going to make us look horrible if we're fearing man today when he comes and he draws us up, and we've got to give an account of everything we've done. Don't do it. Don't fall for that fear stuff. I'm going to go back. I'm going to end in, in, in Deuteronomy because I'm telling you, man, this, this stuff is so heavy. It's, it's eating me up on the inside. Listen to what the Lord said. This is the ultimate. He goes, if you love me with all your heart, mind, and soul, verse 7 of Deuteronomy 30, he says, and the Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies. Praise God. The zeal of the Lord will perform it. That's what I got. And on those who hate you and who have persecuted who the church is not hated as much. I mean, they were and they will be, but it's just Jews right now. They're going to become worldwide. This is a worldwide cancer. Hate Jews. Hate Jews. And true believers. Hate them as well. Christians. We're going to be one in our persecution. Jew and, and, and New Testament believer alike. Those who are passionate about the glory of God. Then the Lord will prosper you. Verse 8 says, And you again obey the Lord and observe all of his commandments, which I command you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand, in the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your cattle and in the produce of your ground. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good. He is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the wind and the waves of his mercy. 
it goes on and on. It's beautiful, but it's this idea that God is jealous by John Mark McMillan. He is jealous.